as you know, event organizers were always thinking that tech um, is, is, is not a core necessity, it's a nice thing to have, uh, but now they basically changed their mindset and are finally realizing that tech is not a threat or an enemy or a competitor, and just the opposite is part of the solution for the future of the business, which means I think that event organizers are realizing that because of tech and through tech, they can generate incremental revenues. And you can see clear examples on retargeting, referrals, lead gen, uh, meetings, uh, everything happening on a virtual basis and helping the organizer to generate digital revenues. And on the other side, there is a clear efficiency through tech uh, in any event organizer uh, in order on saving salaries, GNA, and generate uh, tech efficiencies that will improve the business and also uh, help them to deliver a better service to their specific customers, exhibitors, sponsors, and delegates. Pilots, pilots, and pilots. Uh, think as a tech company. Any tech company will run a pilot, do an MVP, a minimum viable product, test it, fail, fix it, do it again. Don't go into super complicated things. Do it simple, keep it simple, be ready to fail and learn and do it again. Um, try to use tech as a tech company, which means be agile, be entrepreneurial, create your own specific pilot and, and, and be sure that that pilot is not gonna be perfect. And that's fine. That's part of the innovation process. If you have that mindset, you and your team will be having a significantly more productive relationship with tech. I think that the biggest opportunity by far is what I call the augmented TAM. Uh, as an investor, TAM is a total addressable market about the opportunity. I think that virtual events and uh, this COVID situation and all the learnings that we're having during the last year or so are creating a massive new TAM for events. And that total addressable market that is new and bigger is people that usually were not attracted to a specific conference or trade show or festival or whatever. And now because of the virtual pricing, the convenience, no planes, hotels, time allocation, they can join that specific virtual event. That massive new audience, um, it's a fantastic opportunity. The challenge is nobody's cracking the code yet on how to monetize that audience and how to generate the right level and quality of engagement between that audience with the content. And the content could be B2B or B2C. It, the challenge is still there. The digital engagement is not as good as the face-to-face -face engagement. And that's probably gonna take a while or probably it's never gonna be fixed. And that's fine because I don't think that tech should replace face-to-face. -face. I think that tech should improve face-to-face, -face, which means I see the opportunity for those smart, entrepreneurial, creative event organizers to capitalize that augmented TAM and move into layers of engagement where they can add value to their exhibitors and sponsors and connect those virtual attendees in the future as physical attendees and create a better engagement between buyers and sellers all year long or fans and talent uh, if you are in the B2C world. First of all, I think that nobody knows. That, that should be the honest answer, um, particularly for 2021. Um, I'm talking with many different organizers, big, medium, and, and, and small. And uh, if you think about five years, the, the thinking right now is probably events are going to come smaller uh, in 2021. Nobody knows how smaller some events in China are coming as big as they were in 19. Uh, but the thesis is they're going to come smaller and it's going to take two, three years to come back to, you know, 2019 levels. Um, but I think that the revenue split is ready to change because of the learnings and the consumer behavior change that COVID is pushing, which means what I'm trying to say is if, if your show was a complex and you generated 50-50 revenue between exhibit space and tickets, 
uh, probably in the future. And again, I don't know if this is going to be 2021 or 2025, but in the next three to five years, your revenue split should move into probably 20, 30% tickets, uh, 10, 20% virtual tickets, which is some sort of engagement, which is not happening on site, on the floor, on the physical event, plus a different revenue split from your exhibitors, sponsors, and meetings, which means you're gonna start monetizing a blended category that will include some meetings and, and activities that are happening on the convention center, but some of those meetings are also happening during the rest of the year in, in, in the community engagement, which means if you're a trade show and your model was 90-10 or 80-20 20 or whatever, that model between exhibit space and the rest, um, that model is also going to start changing, probably slower uh, and more difficult, but the commerce component is going to change and it's going to start to include some specific digital opportunities in different aspects. Uh, the, the clear opportunity here is customers are ready to change their mindset in terms of the way that they invest time and money at live events. If you're an organizer and you understand your audience and your community, you can have productive conversations with them and discuss ways for their investments that are more productive for them in the future. And if there is a clear lesson learned this year is that virtual could and should be productive in terms of a marketing investment, lead generation and engagement, um, the question will be how can we capitalize that for hybrid after this year when we go back to physical events and which lessons learned from virtual events could be still relevant and valid when we go back to traditional events formats. I'm around events for 25 plus years and I did events, trade shows, festivals, corporate, B2B, B2C, you name it, a little bit of everything. And, and I was always frustrated on how slow what was speed of change in the events industry. I think that COVID will be an accelerator and, and will generate decades of innovations in months or, or a couple of years. And, and this is gonna be fascinating to see. I think that imagination right now is at full speed uh, from all sides, from organizers, sponsors, and visitors. And the genie is out of the ball in terms of now we all know that virtual could and should play a different role. Now we all know that hybrid could be real. And now we all know that traditional events will have a hard time surviving if they're not able to showcase return of investment to their stakeholders. If you put all those things together, I think that the opportunity for change in the next five years is bigger than before in, in our whole history, because you have all these consumers ready to accept and engage with change. You have the exhibitor thinking, I'm happy to keep investing in events, but I want to be sure where is my return of investment coming from. You have organizers rethinking their business model because if not, they're simply not gonna survive because they, they will need to change the value proposition. And you have visitors thinking twice, should I jump into a plane and cross half of the world for a conference or a trade show? Or I should simply participate in a couple of keynotes and meetings from my home or, or from my office. Where is the real added value in terms of face-to-face? -face? I think that this year is gonna force all of us to rethink which specific activities should be done face-to-face -face and which specific activities could be and should be probably done on a virtual perspective, on a digital perspective. If you mix all these components at the same time, there is a clear opportunity for change and innovation in our industry. And uh, I'm super excited to see uh, how smart entrepreneurs and organizers can capitalize those opportunities for the future.